Hello and welcome to our first Green to Green Drive, where we take green cars to green places. So here I am in the Nexon EV driving out of Bhopal, where, like most cities, the Nexon EV really thrive. In fact, EVs are made for cities where there's a lot of pollution, a lot of congestion and EVs being clean do a lot to solve pollution problems. But what about taking EVs to places that are already green? Well, we are headed to a place that's not just green, but it's a place where there are absolutely no humans to spoil the environment. There are only animals roaming free and wild. Yes, we are taking the Nexon EV into the heart of the Satpura Tiger Reserve. But first, let's quickly talk about the one thing that anyone who's driven an electric car wants to know and that is range. We got the Nexon with 92% charge and managed the 140km drive to Forsyth Lodge quite comfortably and we even had enough charge to spare. Now tyres play a key role in extending range and the MRF Wanderers on the Nexon EV have a special compound which lowers rolling resistance considerably and this in turn lessens the drain on the battery. Yes, every bit counts. The drive from Bhopal was smooth and pretty straightforward, except for the last 30 km leading up to the lodge which was narrow and bumpy. We've arrived at the charming Fawcett Lodge in Satpura, which is the home to the largest tiger sanctuary. With just 12 cottages set in 44 acres of forest land, this lodge has a lovely jungle vibe to it. And the general manager, Dipankar Mukherjee, makes me feel right at home. Hi, Hi Abbas. Welcome to Fast How are you? <laughs> Really good to be here. Yeah. How was the drive? How did the car perform? Uh, pretty good. Uh, managed on one charge. Uh, that's what you want, especially yeah. when there's no charging points uh, along the way. Right. So that was good. Uh, I think this is the first EV we've got here. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Never <laughs> seen one before. <laughs> Great. Wow, what's this? Very nice. Oh, this is a gold painting, the local style of tribal painting. And that's what I love about Forsyth Lodge. Everything blends in with the natural surroundings. Even the aesthetically designed cottages are made of mud. There's not a concrete structure in sight. Now, I've got the Machan cottage, which has an open terrace bedroom. And from your bed, you can literally touch nature. There are a lot of animals around, langurs, spotted deers, wild pigs. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, you might have a langur peering at you. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, all of them are quite shy. That would be some morning alarm. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. 
I tell you, after a long day's drive, there's nothing better than coming to a great place to stay. The next day I was all set to explore the park but it was closed because of a weekend lockdown imposed across Madhya Pradesh. Now as it turned out it wasn't a wasted Sunday. I enjoy just hanging around Forsyth Lodge. It's a place you can tell is run by people who genuinely love nature. Our first sortie is into the buffer zone and it's here I meet Vineet Mahadev, one of the top naturalists here and Vineet gives me the lay of the land. So Vineet, where are we headed? So we're going down to the canal where there are quite a few eagle owls nesting and also okay. sometimes we see uh, leopards around that area. Oh wow, <laughs> hope, we get, hope we get lucky. Me too, me too. <laughs> but honestly, this is such a huge, huge yeah. reserve. Uh, I guess animals are really spread out. Yeah, yeah, it's quite spread out. In fact, this area around here, you, quite often we see uh, foxes, which is very uncommon right. in many places. A monkey there, but that's common. <laughs> <laughs> So you've got six national parks in Madhya Pradesh. Satpura is right. the biggest. Is right. there something unique about uh, Satpura? Yeah, Satpura, the most uniqueness is the landscape itself. So on your right, if you see those hills there, that's the continuous mountain chain from here and goes southwards. What can a typical tourist expect over here? It's a very interesting question. See, we have uh, quite a few experiences here. One is there's a large river reservoir here, that uh, Denva River. So that gives us a great experience to use boats or even canoe. Then walking. This is only tiger reserve in central India that allows us to walk inside the reserve. What? It's not dangerous? Oh, it can be, but we take enough precautions. And I guess a lot of protocols you follow. Correct. Uh, yes. Protocols. Yes. And we've been doing this for over a decade now. We, we know certain patterns of these animals also. So you could just go see a tiger, but experiencing a tiger is something that Satpura gives best. Now we've got the Nexon EV here. Uh, it's probably the first electric vehicle in this region, we're going to be taking it to the core area. It, it, it's actually ideal, but somehow we've not seen uh, electric vehicles as uh, park vehicles. Yeah, yeah, not not many. Very few parks in India has implemented. But an independent vehicle like Nexon, like you're saying, it's if it's customized for safari, that is nothing like it. We just passed through a few langur right now, so right. they weren't bothered by the sound, you know. Yeah. Now it's obvious that EVs are a natural fit in wildlife parks but strangely in this part of the world they are more practical too. Getting fuel is a big challenge in this park so that's a primary challenge if something that is electrically charged so why not. Back at the lodge, the first thing I do is charge the Nexon EV. It's a very early pre-dawn start because to take the Nexon EV into the core area we have to take a long detour to cross the Denwa River where it's at its shallowest and narrowest. The Denwa is a natural boundary that separates the buffer and core zones in the Satpura Tiger Reserve. The core is completely natural and totally untouched by human habitation. Now you know, it doesn't get greener than this. A green car with a green number plate in this fabulously green area. In fact, we are making a bit of history because this is the first time a private vehicle has been allowed into the core. 
and that's only because it's green enough to coexist with the wildlife in this absolutely unspoilt area. Daybreak and the forest has come alive with the chatter of hundreds of species of birds. And the spectacular landscape, it just unfolds itself in the morning light. It's just breathtaking. You can see that it's this landscape that sets Satpur apart from other national parks. First sighting is this lovely family of langurs which looked at us curiously and provided a great photo op. But it's the sambas we spotted next that gave us the first thrill of being in a wildlife park. It's such a surreal experience having so many wild animals cross your path. Now, unlike the nervous sambar, the Indian gore, well, it wasn't quite phased at all. Why should it be? This massive beast is bigger than even the next one. But what did the next on Eevee think of the Satpura National Park? with how the Nexon EV has tackled these forest tracks. Now don't forget this isn't a full-fledged SUV, it's a front-wheel drive car, it's got a battery pack under the floor but still ground clearance isn't bad and even when I do hit the underbody which I have to say I've hit a couple of times you know I just don't feel worried. There's no sump, there are no mechanicals, nothing to really break. And I think that's the best part about an EV. You've just got the battery pack and the motors and uh, not too much to go wrong with. What's also impressed me are the MRF Wanderers because they've really cushioned the shocks to a big extent. These tyres have beefy sidewalls and that's really a good first line of defence against rocks and stones. The electric motor's 245 Nm of torque is very useful too when you're scrabbling up hills. Also, you just want that instant response to give you that sense of control in unfamiliar terrain. A fitting end to a fabulous morning out was this picnic Forsyth had arranged at the Sonbhadra camp. Over sandwiches and coffee, we soaked in a fabulous view of the confluence of the Denwa and Sonbhadra rivers. As the day went on, we saw wild pigs, spotted deer, more gore and more sambar. Satpura has a dizzying amount of birds, but for me, the prize sighting was an Indian scops owl quietly perched in a mahua tree. But I must confess that throughout the day, I've had one eye on the wildlife and one eye on the range meter. Because in an EV, you just can't keep that out of your sight. Now, actual range was never an issue, but what did give me a scare is the way the range would suddenly drop and then come back. The thing is, the algorithm doesn't display average range, but gives an instantaneous reading of your driving style. So if you drive with a heavy foot, the range plummets, but if you drive gently, the range suddenly increases. Anxiety, no, that hasn't hit me yet. What's hit me is tiger anxiety. I still haven't seen one. As 
As the sun went down and we started making our way back, it was just then that Vineet heard the warning call of the Lungu. Then his telescopic eyes scanned the rocks and in the distance, there it was. A large leopard hunkered down, staring at us before slowly slinking away. What an amazing sight and what an end to an amazing day. So we are back at Fawcett Lodge and it's time to recharge the Nexon EV. No fast chargers here, not in this neck of the woods. Luckily, we've got this rigged up here. Thanks to Dipankar, who takes fabulous care of this. He's loaned us this 15 amp plug point, which is all that we need. Overnight charge, I'm going to get a foot battery and then I'm good to go for the next day. The next day was an even earlier start to get deeper into the core area before daybreak. The Nexon EV is so silent that even the Samba don't expect it. We had our fill of gore, we had our fill of sambar, cheetahs or spotted deer and even got to see the elusive leopard once more. But what eluded us was the tiger. Ah oh well, I suppose we have to keep something for the next time. But you know, there's more to this park than tigers and the most enthralling bit for me was hunting for one because in the process we discovered how absolutely enchanting the Satpura Tiger Reserve is. Gliding noiselessly across unspoiled green meadows with birds and cheetal grazing, oh, this is an idyllic experience I'll never forget. We end our drive at the Madai Gate, which is actually the entry point for tourists who have to take a boat across the Denmark. It's here that we meet the field director, whose idea it was to bring an EV into Satpura. Mr. Krishnamurti feels national parks are made for electric vehicles. Welcome to Satpura Tiger Reserve. As you told, yes, there is a great need now to go for green technologies, particularly in the safari sector. Right now, we don't have good vehicles in this sector to use for safari. So we believe that in future, the electric vehicles will give this opportunity to use green technologies and to reduce the carbon footprints in the park also. Currently, I think I can say for Madhya Pradesh, uh, roughly we have around 1000 vehicles uh, we are using for park safaris in different tiger reserves and in other sanctuaries also. Uh, you have seen Satpura Tiger Reserve, it's a hilly terrain, so in, uh, and particularly after monsoon, the tourism starts from October. So in those time, uh, you must have to have four-wheel drive, otherwise it's not possible to drive in this hilly terrain. 
Mm. Yeah, of course, we are looking for that. Uh, so some designers and developers who can create a vehicle which is suitable to run these vehicles for safari purposes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank Autocar for giving this opportunity to test this vehicle in our park. And I think the new thinking has been brought in in wildlife safari that use of electronic vehicles. I think. Our uh, future is bright. I, I think we will get electronic vehicles for safari in future. Thank you very much.